Yes, yes. It is our creation, isn't it? Why are you so afraid? <laughs> it is my drama. It is my movie that I am shooting. I am shooting, I am watching at the same time. So, what is there to be afraid of? And the problem is you think you are the character in the movie. And the movie is going to end. Yes, it will. Who wants, who wants a movie that goes on for many, many days, many, many years? We want to end it. That is why we programmed death in it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you don't know this probably. But uh, you are already very wise. Because you are born here. You are already very, very evolved. You know, I mean, try not to look at it from the human point of view. Try to look at it from the... A uh, higher point of view, like the point of view of the causal body, which has a bigger intelligence than the human intelligence. You knew that uh, once you get trapped here in this um, physical world, the matrix, <laughs> there is no way out. You can remain here for as long as you want. It is your creation. So, you made an arrangement to get out of here. What is that arrangement? Death. You programmed death here. It is not like this in any other universe only in the physical universe it is called mrityu lok for a reason which means the world of death you see death is not a bad thing it is a it is a door which you have opened here because you knew that it can become a problem if we get trapped here you can forget because that is how we come here we come with a total forgetting of our real nature so you were very smart enough you you landed here with a return ticket <laughs> You, you must have seen, I always call these, um, uh, you know, events that cause death as tickets. I always say, oh, that, that will become my ticket then. Uh, you must have pay, paid attention to this, if those who pay attention to what I say. I never say anything without a reason. This is my programming, this is my conditioning. So, whatever comes out of my mouth has something, you know, some reason there, some meaning there. So, we are, we are here with a written ticket. Your uh, booking is limited here in this hotel of the world. You cannot extend it now. So it is a very smart thing to do. Whenever you enter an experience which will be dreamlike experience, you should go there with a return ticket. Otherwise, you are stupid, isn't it? Now we enter our dream world in the night time, but we enter there with a return ticket. Have you noticed? What is the return ticket? The activity of the body. The, you do not wake up from the dream. It is impossible. The dream character will never be able to wake up from the dream. The body calls you back to the physical world, from the dream world. It is always, you know, the body has completed the sleep cycle now. Now it needs to get up. It needs to eat. It needs to go to bathroom. It needs to do something. You see, your boss is calling you. <laughs> Every five minutes your phone is ringing. This will bring you back from the dream world. Nothing else. Survival will bring you back. That is your written ticket. Imagine the people in coma where the senses are not functioning or they are not functioning. You know, the internal circuits are broken somehow. They are functioning but not able to break the dream. And they are dreaming for many, many years. Sometimes they come out of this and then they try to they see a darkness and they, they are only able to blink their eyes or you know, move their finger. And that is like kind of my nightmare. That is even worse than death, isn't it? At least this kind of suffering will not be there, there after death, after destruction of the body. Imagine being trapped in the body and not knowing what to do. That is a bigger suffering. You don't want that. And therefore you came here with a written ticket. Be thankful to yourself that such an arrangement exists. See the, in the situation of those uh, creatures who are not in the world of death, who are eternal, like they are living, like they are immortal. They are trapped in some kind of heavenly prison now what, what what brings them out of it i have no idea actually but all all ways of their progress have been blocked because they do not have the written ticket so i see death like this <laughs> i have a very very strange way of looking at death because there is a you know bigger picture there which i found out through my own experiences nobody's stopping you if you're forgotten nobody's stopping you from recalling know your real nature Know the nature of the mind, know the nature of the world and you will be thankful for the death. You will not be fearful. And you see an ordinary person is exactly opposite. Prefers ignorance, clings to people, clings to the objects in the world, does not want to get out of this body. That is 
because of that they are suffering terrified of death so we don't want to be in that situation that is why we are seeking nick is saying isn't it renunciation sanyas is also a bondage it depends on how you define renunciation if you define renunciation as getting rid of all the objects all the relations and uh, all uh, your uh, belongings then it is a bondage only and that is not real renunciation the real uh, sanyas is when you detach from these things while keeping these things there is no issue you see you need things to keep the body alive you need to be in the society because the body depends on the society it cannot survive without the society isn't it not for long or if you if you are very hardcore you can live outside the society somebody will come and kill you because <laughs> because that is how the society is and you need society for protection for food for um, whatever reproduction or whatever you say and uh, the real sanyas is doing all these things with total detachment fully knowing that it is not you who is in the society it is not you who it is not you who is in the world you are not of the world you are in the world that's all that's all so you dive in the lake without getting wet this is the koan this is the puzzle for you do it now <laughs> it is not so difficult you see nobody will even notice that you are a sanyasi if you live here skillfully in the world how how will this kind of detachment come not by miracle of some kind it comes only by knowledge you see just like i told you just now you see your body is just a collection of cells most of them are just microbes that are <laughs> living with this body that should produce a detachment from what if you think this is my body or this is uh, and me that should produce a detachment there the more you study the more detached you will get it's not a big deal it's not a it does not even take a lot of intelligence manish is saying you taught in podcast process oh by the way there is a very good uh, podcast episode on renunciation if nick is interested i i will i go into little details of how to become renunciate without renouncing anything and that is i have shown that in that episode it is on the podcast page so manish reminded me so manish is saying you taught in a podcast process of incarnation that death is a feature present only in this physical reality and it has its own purpose significance wishing not to die is like saying i want to remain in class 1 all my life i do not want to pass and get out of the school yes you got the message there yes and the life and death are like uh, school classes you see class 1 class 2 class 3 we enter the repeated lives to progress we are not here to stay actually and the death is like a summer vacation a winter vacation depending on where where you live so we close down the schools for summer and uh, that is like death then we go back to school but in a higher class higher standard and we learn more things get out of here and then come back if you are not doing this then there is the process of incarnation the uh, process of rebirth the phenomena of rebirth is of no use or if you are devolving like you are our schools they, they will not demote you to a lower class it very, very rarely happens i think it does not happen in india they will either kick you out of the school or they will keep you in the same class but uh, this uh, universal mind uh, is a bigger school it is a different school it will devolve you it will it will send you in the lower classes you see it does not waste its resources we are the resources of its evolution so it recycles this that kind of uh, mind back into the lower classes so if you have this kind of ignorance that no 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 i don't want to go from here i i want to stay in the same place which is tendency of many people actually they do not want to change they do not want to they do not want to progress and they have, they know everything already and their beliefs are ultimate truth so for such people well you will remain in the class and actually the universal mind will ensure that you devolve so that it it gets a chance to clean up clean up the mess that has happened in this mind it is stagnated we don't want stagnated minds you see we drain that mind down like a stagnated water that uh, starts stinking we drain that thing out and then we let the fresh water come in so <laughs> the universal mind will 
devolve the causal body actually it's not there is nobody present there to do that it happens automatically this is how this is set up this play is set up like this so it's very beautiful the causal body will take a lower form and not really you know not immediately it it tries to struggle a little bit like it wipes out everything then takes a birth again and tries to come up a little bit but if it is trapped in you know a stagnant society for you know, that is going on in ignorance for many hundred years then it it, it will devolve into something it will even take a form in the primitive uh, societies like primitive cultures the tribal cultures here and not not very civilized um, societies so that you know this junk that is collected gets a chance to be washed out and if there also it does not purify then uh, it devolves further into the lower creatures like it will become a cow it will become a dog or bird or something and even there if there is some trouble the even lower it goes even lower <laughs> so it rarely happens but it it happens you see now i cannot prove it they prove these things to you but this is this is what it looks like so i i give i sometimes give this kind of uh, worldly metaphor like a, a materialistic metaphor that imagine if the monkeys the apes decided like 1 million years ago that no we don't want to evolve we want to keep this body the monkey body long tail i love my tail so they, they invent a kind of medicine that keeps them alive you see and now you can guess the results for millions of years we have only monkeys no humans what has made us evolve death <laughs> they died out you see they did not really die out they, they appeared reappeared in a refined form which is humans and even before the lower forms there were lower avatars you see lower forms of the universal mind it does not want to stay and and when you go against death nature will resist it will cause death <laughs> but you see everything is allowed here just like i said everything is allowed you need to have that kind of um, knowledge to manipulate this um, you know rule set you can bypass the rules sometimes but it's going to stop your evolution for example you take your evolution in your hands you become a siddha you become a very powerful tantric who knows how to evolve and that that will so that which is witnessing the evolution that which is witnessing the um, death birth life rebirth relife redeath everything the progression of the causal body progression of the universal mind and all that is eternal that is timeless that is that is not subject to any kind of change because it is pure emptiness pure nothingness without any qualities and there is no time also there and it is infinite it is already free it is already liberated and i am that so nothing is really happening here nothing important is happening so with this uh, knowledge comes this uh, freedom comes this peace of mind then you let whatever is happening happen these tiny tiny things you know viruses animals and um, wars and whatever they are not going to trouble you now <laughs> you you can see it uh, as a learning opportunity and if you do not survive it is your ticket it is your ticket now so let me see what you wrote while i got disconnected make is saying what will happen to a mind which is completely spiritually evolved and uh, what that mind will do after that and we do not know there is no such thing as a complete spiritual evolution it is endless it goes on and on we can guess a little bit because the evolution is like a widening of the mind it is not that uh, one thing changes into the other it keeps all the layers which you can witness in the physical world also we have all the layers from the inert matter like if you if you know my uh, um, discussion my model of the layers of the mind there there are all the layers are present here right now the inert matter is present the active matter is present the single cells are present isn't it the single cell forms are present and uh, yeah, all all kinds of um, uh, what do you call ev- evolutionary artifacts are present here so uh, we also have you know a, this tiny thing in the corner of the eye which was once a layer which covered the eye when we were sea creatures like we were in the water 
that <laughs> we still have that you see vestigial stuff nothing is actually removed that is the characteristic of the mind it is it is arranged in layers nothing gets removed so it is simply widening the new layers they they are added on on the top of old layers so ultimately it expands so much that it becomes a bigger mind like then it starts producing its own children which we have discussed so many times it produ- produces its own um, causal bodies like it's a cell division like process reproduces and then they start their own uh, in- incarnation cycles and uh, this bigger mind then expands into a universe like it produces many many universes because it, the the uh, forms need a playground in which to take experience and then it becomes a greater mind by itself this collection of the greater minds is called the universal mind so uh, there are the universes are dissolving also but where are they going nowhere actually there is nowhere to go and there is only one place here which is here and now so open ended change evolution means simply a change it does not mean becoming superior from inferior it simply means a kind of change like uh, you see uh, water boiling what is happening there water is not becoming superior by getting converted into steam <laughs> it is simply expanding the bubbles form they, they rise to the top and they expand and they become the clouds and they fall down is it, this is going on it is evolution but we do not we see it as change only we do not see it as a, a arrow like thing which you know comes from one place and goes to another place no evolution is not like that evolution is according to me i mean i have defined it somewhere like it is the exploration of infinite forms there are infinite possibilities so the mind is exploring all the possibilities sometimes it looks like that is it has taken a trajectory that's all we are on a trajectory but it's kind of only exploration of the forms which will happen forever there is according to me at least there is no final stage here in evolution <laughs> i'm sorry to disappoint if you had this kind of belief that i'll become something after the evolution no 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 you are already everything right now right here your the evolution is not there to be, to become something we are not evolving to become something bigger better nothing like this it's a play it's a play exploration the only thing you should be you know kind of aware of is that do not make this into a suffering that's all that's all there is no need to stop anything else banish is saying nick listen to the podcast series nature of reality yes 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 go go and uh, listen to the series on nature of realities uh, reality and laws of the mind these two are basic if you have this kind of questions what is evolution why it is happening what is evolving why are there forms why are the perishable forms like why is there death what is achieved after evolution you will you will get all these answers you see once i came to know all these things which unfortunately i cannot show you directly i can show you some things directly which is you know fundamental truth but the affairs of the mind very very tricky but you will even to go through this you, you will get a good picture even though it is kind of approximate picture you know my knowledge is very limited but you will get it you will get all the answers actually i found this answer simply by sitting and meditating can you believe it <laughs> yes it requires a lot of you know um initiate initiation like requires a lot of inputs first which you will get only from a guru a many gurus you know get as many gurus as you can including the great scientists when she is saying in short a completely spiritual a spiritually evolved mind the my mahachitta is what we see around us just look around this is what you will do when you will completely evolve you will create your own universe and maybe i will come to live and enjoy it <laughs> well manish it has already happened it has already happened we are the same substance we are the same memories that are appearing back in the greater mind the mahachitta it has already happened it will continue to happen there is no end to it <laughs> nothing here which ends because nothing started really the time is an illusion isn't it so nothing really started it is exploration in the time domain of the infinite possibilities that are already here